Whoever you support. Whatever colors you wear. Get them ready. It's all about to kick off. Get ready to hold your breath. Get ready to have your nerves shredded. Get ready to roar for your team. Because we're capable of anything. This is our league. And again. Oh, what a goal! What a goal that is! Let's make it our season. It's a game of two halves. We support both. SSE Airtricity, official sponsor of the men's and women's leagues. Hello and welcome to the SSC Airtricity 2021 League Live Show with me, Marie Crow, as we look ahead to what should be another fantastic year of domestic football in Ireland. In this special preview show, we'll be going around the leagues, interviews with Longford Town manager Dara Doyle, Shelburne striker Yo-Yo Maddy and DLR Waves captain Catherine Cronin as we look ahead to an exciting 2021. Before we do that though, let's look back on an eventful 2020. Couple of minutes. Here is Massey. Oh, and never minutes to go. Big for it. Rolls gone straight to Graham Burke. And one down. with Shamrock Rovers. Colin, we know how difficult it is for any team to do back-to-back. -back. Do Shamrock Rovers have enough balance, do you think, to do it? I think so. I think the loss of Jack Byrne and Aaron McIniff is going to be uh, colossal for them. Um, I think by winning a league, and Steph will be able to say this, I think you need a strong defensive line. And they have that, and they've brought in Sean Gannon and Sean Hoare, two very, very experienced defenders as well, to help, to help that. Um, going forward, I think Stephen Bradley is going to have a job to do with Danny Mandroy. Um, he did the same with Jack Byrne, looked after him, um, made him into a top, top player, like we knew Jack was, and Danny has sim similar attributes to Jack. So if Stephen can, can manage Danny into uh, to getting into the team and being creative like Jack was, I think Shamrock Rovers will be hard to beat. Yeah, absolutely. And then Stephanie, when we look at the, the, the teams that are going to potentially challenge them for that title, we mentioned Bose, they're going to mention Bose, and, and they did a lot of their business earlier. They resigned a lot of players, they've added a few names, but who's going to get the goals for them? Yeah, obviously they've changed pretty much their whole front line, haven't they? With obviously Danny Mandrew, I think Danny Grant's gone as well. Alua coming in, Keith, they've got kind of a couple of players who they'll expect to get goals from this season, but I think uh, Keith Long and Trevor probably deserve a lot of credit. I think probably out of the three teams you're talking about in terms of Dundalk, Shamrock Rovers, and Bowes, they've probably got the least budget, so he, they've had to kind of go out and, and really get players. I think if you look in the last couple of years, they've gone out and got players maybe coming back from England, the likes of James Talbot. Again, probably players who fell out of love with the game and come back in here and done really well with Bowes. And when you look at the squad they've got, they've got Bastian Hare, and I think brings something a little bit different, a little bit more experience in there. So I think they've done really well to kind of to do as well as they have over the last seasons with, with the with the team they've had. And as I said, he, he manages to get the best out of, of players. So I'm looking forward to seeing how well they can do this season. 
Dundalk are going to be interesting. Just, I think, when you consider the upheaval last year and all the new faces that they have added to the team as well. What do you think they're going to be like this season? I think every, it's, it's the million dollar <laughs> question I think everyone is, is going to be asking. They've lost three really, really experienced um, players from their back line. Four, if you want to include Dane Massey, who's been in and out of the team last season. Um, Gary Rogers is going to be a huge loss, first and foremost. Bringing in Alessio Abibi is, is um, an unknown quantity in, in terms of Irish football, but supposedly he's going to be a very, very good, good goalkeeper for them. Um, and losing Sean Gannon, as I said, Sean Hoare as well. It's, it's going to be very, very interesting. Now, they did sign players, international players from Latvia and, Fer and the Faroe Islands, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on. And, um, but they still, they've got quality all over the pitch. They retain Michael Duffy, Pat Hoobin, David McMillan, their goal scoring hero from the Cup final last year. So, um, Dundalk will be there or thereabouts. It's just how well the new players get settled into the team. Steph, is it difficult for a, a team when they get a lot of new players in to gel? Like, well, is that going to take a little bit of time? Yeah, I think particularly when you look at Dundalk, the different types of players they've brought in, as you say, a kind of unknown entity in terms of some of the players they've brought in. Um, I watched them in a pre-season game against Bowes a couple of weeks ago, and Djurkovsky, the right side of the player, looks an excellent player. I think he'll be a really good player from this season. But again, it's about gelling those players together. You mentioned the BB coming in, obviously taking over from Gary Rogers, who's been a legend but in the league over the last couple, the last 10 years or so. So for him coming in, I think he really needs to kind of stamp his authority. Coming from Europe, he probably will have that kind of good playing out from the back, but it's, it's can he handle the kind of the hustle and bustle of the, of the League of Ireland, you know? So it's brought in, as we mentioned, a couple of unknown entities. And it's, it's exciting, I think, for the league to see European players coming to play here in Ireland. And, and hopefully it can make the league a little bit more exciting well, this year. We've always said that, Maria, said it time and time again. We've always, the top teams have always grabbed players from within the league. And it's about time somebody has just said, look, let's go outside, not even from England, but from further afield, from, 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 player, from teams that have played in Europe, players that are wanting to come and compete and play in Europe themselves. And I think it's great for the league that we're bringing in these imports. There's a few in St. Pat's as well. And interestingly, Jamie Lennon said this week that they're lacking consistency. Is that what it is? Is that what they need to, to get right to maybe just to push up a little bit further? I don't know. I think with Pat's, I think they lack a goal scorer. They haven't had one since Christy Fagan and they've brought in Ronan Coughlin this season. And Ronan is a fantastic link-up player. He's really, really good. Six goals last year were four of them were for pen from, from the penalty spot. So I don't know if, you're, if, that's, if he's going to be the type of player that's going to be scoring 15, 20 goals. You're going to have to be relying on your wide men, the likes of Jay McClelland, um, Chris Forrester, Billy King has been in, in great, great form last season until he got injured. Um, so I don't, I don't really know if it's a consistency thing, um, but the sign of the likes of John Mountney, Paddy Barrett, um, are going to be big for, for Pats and hopefully they can kick on and, and get, get those goals because they, were, they didn't score enough last year. It's a, because so much has happened in the last few months, the end of the season does seem like it was a really long time ago and, and often when some of the teams had signed their players at the end of the season it's nearly hard to remember because it was so long ago and so much has happened. But Steph, when you look at Sligo and they finished so strongly last year, they've retained a lot of players and they've signed well, they've signed well as well in, in the last few weeks. What are we expecting from them this season? Yeah, I suppose to try and compete, isn't it? Every team in the league, I think when you look at pretty much all the teams, kind of a lot of players have left and they've got other players in trying to, to rotate their squad and get the best players possible to try and compete with the likes of, obviously, Bowes, Dundalk, Shamrock Grovers. They're the teams to beat, you know, they're the teams you want to try and compete with. But I think in terms of Sligo, I think it's just about getting a little bit of consistency to their play, trying to get those wins and pick up wins to try and compete, as I said, within the league. Waterford are interesting as well because Kevin Sheedy is there. And when you think of, I suppose, an international legend, you wonder what kind of play, what kind of a, a setup he's going to have. Absolutely, and the squad has been absolutely decimated from last year. They've lost Ali Coote, um, who's been a, a terrific player for them. Matty Smith has, has left them as well. Um, they brought in a couple of Welsh players from Cardiff and Swansea, um, underage players, so hopefully they can hit the ground running. Um, they had a poor result in pre-season against Cork a couple of, couple of days ago. Um, so they have but. It's going to be tough for them, it really is, and Kevin Cheedy is going to have a job in his hands because I can see them towards the bottom of the table this season, unfortunately. And Steph Finn Harps, when you look at the, the job Ollie's done, I think he gets a huge amount of credit. But do you think he's freshened things up enough for, for this season, or you know, will it be difficult to replicate what he did last year? Yeah, obviously they finished very strong last year, didn't they, and done well to kind of get out of that kind of relegation battle. They're a good team, as you mentioned, Ollie done quite well with them last year, but I think it's a very competitive league. When you look at the teams, they've all tried to improve the players they've lost, they've tried to bring in players and replace them. So I think Finn Harps will be looking to push on this season and, and as you mentioned, try and continue the good, way, the good play they had towards the end of last season. When we were, when we were looking at signings in the, throughout this window, I think the one that probably garnered the most attention was Joe Hodge with Derry City, just a brilliant addition to the league. 
brilliant addition. But again, just, we've, done, we've done it before <laughs> with so many players. We've put a lot of pressure on, on this. Got to remember, Joe's only 18 years of age. Um, and he's coming into, into first-team football probably for the first time. Um, and it's going to be tough for him because Derry have, have lost very, very good players themselves. And Gerard or Bruna, um, Ali Gilchrist has gone, Peter Cherry has gone. Um, and they've lost Conor McCormick, they're probably their leader on the pitch. So um, Joe Hodge is really, I'm really looking forward to see him because he's a fantastic prospect. Um, but it's going to be difficult for Derry, I think, as well this season. We, we, you know, we always focus on the top, but the bottom, of course, Stephanie, is always, um, it is always fascinating, I think, especially towards the, the end of the season, as many teams tend to go on a run at, at the end. And if you look at the two newcomers, and we we'll start with Longford, like, how difficult is it going, going to be for them to step up? Yeah, look, I've watched a lot of Longford over the last couple of seasons, trying to get out of the, uh, the first division is, was a difficult uh, slog for them, I think, obviously, last season. They've always been a team that's trying to play football, which I think is great to see. I think they're trying to play the right style of football. But last year, they kind of had to, to change it up a little bit and really try to compete with the likes of Cabin Teeley and Cove Ramblers, who made it difficult to play against. So I think coming up into the Premier Division, it's a different ball game altogether. Um, looking at them, They've signed quite a few decent players, but my worry would be maybe the experience. There's lacking a little bit of experience. I think when you look at the squad, it's probably only Dean Zambra and Sam Verden who really has that Premier Division experience. A lot of young players coming up. So I think Darrow will really have his, his, his work cut out to make sure these young players know exactly what they're, they're going to get within the Premier Division. And I think, as I said, they've got a good squad, good squad of players, decent, decent talent within the team. But it's about that experience. I think that they really need to try and really work hard to stay in the league and it's going to be a different type of league to the, to the first division. Conan, do you think Drada have that experience that Stephanie talks about? Absolutely, I think they're going to be the dark horses this year. They've signed really, really well. Um, again, talked about defensively, they're very, very, very strong. Um, Dane Massey has come in. They've brought in Gary Deegan as well from Shelburne, who's plenty of experience. Um, but up top, I think I'm, I'm very, I'd be really, really interested to see how, how many goals they'll score this season with the likes of Dinny Corkin and the team, Chris Lyons and the team. And we saw Ron Murray's fantastic free kick in the Malone Cup there at the weekend against Dundalk, so he's, if, if he gets anywhere near to his potential, he's going to be a star as well. And I'm really fascinated to see how Mark Doyle gets on. Mark Doyle lit up the first division over the last number of years. This is his first chance at Premier Division football, and I um, really hope he does well. OK, well, I think we've gone through every single team now. Um, last thing before we finish up here, Conan Call, who will be champions in 2021? Can't see past Shamrock Rovers, Marie. And Stephanie? I'd have to agree with, with Conan. I think Shamrock Rovers really are the team to beat this season. Duffy. Oh, what a goal! What a goal that is! One of the newcomers, of course, is Longford Town, and we headed down to training this week to catch up with manager Dara Doyle. Um, yeah, listen, it's, it's great looking back, and it was a, a marvellous achievement, I suppose, to finish in, in fourth position in the playoffs and not to quite challenge at the top end where we wanted to be. Obviously, it was important we did make the playoffs and did. And going into the playoffs, it was like obviously one cup final after another from UCD into Galway and into the Shells game. And what we had was really three really strong performances and, and three great results, which have brought us to where we are now, which is challenging at the top table in the country. So looking back on it, delighted with everything and how it went and, and how we've built so far to prepare ourselves for the new season. So um, really looking forward to what's ahead of us and, and the challenge that awaits us. Yeah, obviously difficult because, I mean, they called the... The first one, I think the one I get to win against Galway, a playoff final, and we all knew it wasn't a playoff final, it was just another game to get to the destination every team in the first division playoffs wanted to get to. So it was all about getting to that game against the Premier team, and when it, when it got to the game against Shel Shelburne in a one-off game, um, we knew obviously they'd come into it on a, on a bad run at the time, and um, we'd won more games than obviously we'd lost last season, so we, we went into it with more positives than they probably did. We felt... Uh, ready for the game. We couldn't wait for that game to come along from week to week and um, yeah, it was brilliant to achieve it, like I said, in the manner we did. Yeah, no, listen, I, I definitely do and, and that's why we've kept 17-18 um, of last year's group. Uh, a lot of really good, talented, technical, young, hungry players with a point to prove and it was important that we kept that group of players together. What, what that group have over the last number of years, some of them have been together two, three, four years which is great and they've been growing every year and I expect them to grow again and I expect players to stand up to the challenge to what's ahead of them and, and show people what they're all about. Uh, as regards the people that we've brought in, of, of course we do have to add strength to the squads and we feel that we've done that. We, we've brought in a number of players to strengthen the group and um, we, we'll be looking for them to bring us on to the next level to ensure we can compete in the Premier. We want to bring in players that, that nearly have a point to prove. I think if all the players that you've mentioned, they've all been in and around first teams and, and high level clubs from a young age 
um, possibly haven't kicked on where, th where they would have done. But one thing that most definitely is there is the talent. We feel that we're a really good place for them to kick on in their career and show people what they're about. Um, we want that to be at Longford, to take it on to the next level and really bring this club to, to higher levels and ensure that, that we can compete at Premier level every year. Yeah, listen, we can't wait. We, we all want to test ourselves at the highest level. Um, Derry City at home in the first game, we couldn't have asked for more than a home fixture. Uh, it's going to be a really tough, tough task, as will every game at that level, but one thing we will be is be prepared, we'll be ready, and uh, we can't wait till the 20th of March comes along and uh, we get to play the first game. Stephanie, I think the first division is going to um, garner a huge amount of interest this year. It's all going to be streamed on LOI TV and also there is some really big teams in there and let's start with Cork City because they obviously have a, a huge fan base and their presence is, is going to um, get a lot of eyeballs on it. How do you think they're going to fare? Yeah, look, I think it's an exciting season. I think looking at the first division is going to be a very competitive league this year. Um, you mentioned Cork City, the likes of Shells as well. Um, I think Cork over the last couple of years have had a bit of a, a, a bad time. Obviously, financially, things probably haven't been going great for them. Um, they've gone from being a title winning team to maybe obviously getting relegated. That's not, that's not what the fans want to see, but I'm sure the fans want to see a bit of bite, want to see them competing again to get, to get back up into the Premier Division because I believe that's where they belong. They've been a really good team in the Premier Division over the years. So, as I said, I think the fans really just want to see them make sure, go down, compete and try to try their best to get back up into the Premier Division where I believe their fans think they belong. So. <laughs> There'll be a lot of fans, I'd say, feeling that Conan and Galway <laughs> probably be one team that will definitely want to get back up. And when you throw in John Caulfield and Lisa Fallon, it's very interesting there. It's a great combination. They've worked together before, as we know, down in Cork City and the success that they've had together. Um, and they've signed really, really, really well as well, going into a um, full-time setup as well for a first division club. It's a statement of intent, really. Um, the sign of Conor McCormick, I mentioned him in the Premier Division preview there, um, he, they signed him from Derry City and obviously he's got a long affiliation with John Caulfield as well. John Caulfield's type of player, isn't he? just gets the ball down, plays it simple, but then breaks up play, exactly what you want your defensive midfielder to do. Um, so it'll be interesting to see some very, very good young players bringing back in Porrick Cunningham. Rory Keating has come home from England as well. So um, two strikers that will score goals. So really looking forward to see how they get on. Stephanie, just from a personal point of view, I'm delighted to see Treaty United in there and they've five players from Clare as well. So uh, it's just brilliant to see because it's not like a, a place that there would be a huge amount of football. But for Tommy Barrett, like he's going to be so experienced because of everything that he's gone through over the last few years and he's going to know his players really well also. Yeah, I think it's just about getting his squad together as quick as possible, hasn't he? got their, their licence a couple of weeks ago, so it's good to see a team from Limerick back in within the league. Um, I think, as you mentioned, the experience that Tommy Barra has, he'll, he'll want to compete, he won't want to go into games and, and be beaten every, every week, you know, so it's going to be an interesting season, I think, for, for Treaty to come back in. And as I said, I'm interested to see how, who, who, how they can kind of get their squad together. They have hadn't had as much time as most uh, teams within the, the first division so far, so it'd be interesting to see now see what they can put, put together for, for the season starting. Cody, more often than not, there is a surprise packet that usually emerges after a few games. Who do you expect it to be? Um, I think Atlone has signed really, really well. Um, Adrian Carby has brought in some very, very good players that have won things in the, in, in the League of Ireland. It looks like Killian Campbell, Curtis Byrne, Aidan Freel has won a first division a couple of times. Um, so they've got really, really good experience. They've brought in some technical Technically great players as well. James Dune is going to be very, very good. I'd love to, I'm looking forward to seeing him play in the first division as well. So I think Athlone, they were in around bottom two, bottom three over the last number of seasons. I can see them pushing up the table a little bit and who knows, they might even get a playoff spot. And just those playoff spots, Steph, who do you think is going to be up there at the end of the season? Yeah, as I mentioned, I think it's going to be a very competitive season. Um, I think the likes of Shells probably be the ones who will be looking to try and push to win the league. I think Bray Wanderers were, surprisingly, I say dark horse because I think people don't expect much, didn't expect much from them, but they were just pipped, obviously, for the league last year. And I think Gary Cron and Dennis Highland in there, good coaches and get the best out of their team. So I think it's going to be a, a competitive league this year. It really is. I think there's a lot of the teams around the league are going to be wanting to get into those playoff spots if, if they don't win the league. So it's... An exciting year ahead, I think. For me, I think if I was to pick teams, I think Galway are going to be there. I think Galway definitely going to be up around there. You mentioned the John Caulfield and Lisa Fallon doing really well. I watched them yesterday against Longford. They tried to play a little bit of a different style of football, which surprised me. But um, yeah, good teams. Uh, as I said, I think it's going to be very competitive. What kind of style of football were they playing? <laughs> well, I think when I've watching John Caulfield's teams over the years, you said they do things simple, get the ball forward, direct. And, and a couple of times that yesterday, they were trying to play out from the back, which was something that you kind of don't really see from... Well, I hadn't seen from Galway over the last couple of seasons, so a little bit, little bit of different uh, variations to their play. But yeah, I think look, it's going to be a very 
very competitive league this year and I think the first division and people watching getting to watch the live stream will, will get good style of football. Stephanie mentioned the importance of good coaches and seeing Collie O'Neill going into Cabin Teeley is a real boost for them. Huge boost. Um, Collie O'Neill has vast experience as a coach in this league, Dublin City, Shelburne, um, earlier on in his, uh, his co coaching career and he took over at UCD and he's been, he brought them to the Premier Division um, unexpectedly and um, yeah he was out of the game for a little while come back in Pat Devlin and <laughs> done wonders to get him back into the into into the role as coach and uh, you know you can never underestimate a team where Colin O'Neill is so um, yeah Kevin Teeley could do well this season too and they signed the record go <laughs> their record goal scorer back as well Kieran Marty Waters so he's going to be a terrific terrific yeah. player as well there's definitely lots to look forward to so if you were to call it who would be the uh, winners I can't Shelburne they've signed so well it's like a Premier Division team they have um, the experience within the team, their coach um, bringing in Alan Reynolds was a shrewd move as well, so I can't see past Shelburne. Will that bring pressure though? Oh, 100%, but they had pressure there when they had to go up and back in 2019 as well, bringing in, a, um, bringing in a lot of Premier Division players into their squad. They got up then, and it's a better squad now, so there's no, no doubt about it. Now, go away, run them close, but I st do still think that Shelburne will, uh, will come out on top. What about you, Steph? Yeah, I feel like I'm copying you now. I was just saying Shamrock Rovers as well, but yeah, again, Great I can't. Go. Yeah. I think Shells, when you look at the, the players they've brought in, I think they have a, a team there that are will want to be in the Premier Division. I think they've got Premier Division players. So I think the only thing for them, I will say, is that look, the Premier or the First Division is a different ball game. It's going to be difficult games coming up against. It's not just about playing pretty football. It's about mucking it out in certain games, you know, and getting those results. But they brought in Yaya Maddy, who I think he'll score goals from. He's proven he scored goals for UCD within the first division. So, look, they've got good, good players, and I, I think it is hard to see past them. I think, as well, as I said, I think Bray Wanderers could be dark horses as well. Go okay, push them. Right. From Neelan, but they've won it back. And Dogan spots on a most off his line. And it's in! Would you believe it? Tanir Dogan from inside the centre circle, spotted Automoso off his line and he's executed that one perfectly and there's nothing you can do about that. Well, one of the first division signings of the off-season has been Yo-Yo Maddy making the trip across Dublin to Shelburne from UCD and we caught up with the former student ahead of the new campaign. I chose Shelburne because I think it's a really big club and um, the gaffer rang me and he told me the plans for next season. and. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying to get the club back where it belongs and hopefully get promoted to the Premier Division. It was a difficult decision to make, yeah. Um, of course, being at UCD for so long, it's hard to leave, but um, I felt that this is the right move for me in my career and hopefully it pays off. Training's been really good, yeah. Um, all the lads are, are really nice to me as well, which is a huge bonus. And um, yeah, the standard's excellent and there's some great players here. Yeah, it was difficult leaving UCD to be fair because I have lots of friends there. Um, I'm still obviously still in college and uh, I was living with a few players and yeah it was it was tough to say the good boys but this is part of football. Yeah I look back on my time at UCD with great pride. Um, I enjoyed my time there. I played with some fantastic players who have gone on to some great things as well and I'm hopefully going to be one of those players now. It was difficult for a bit mixing the education with football but I think I started to get used to it very quickly and I'm still obviously doing that now here at Shells and you know, that's part and parcel of being a student. It'll be really difficult to get out of this, the division this year. Um, even last year was very tough, as you saw, um, with the season coming so close at the end. And I think it's going to be a huge challenge this year, but one that we're ready to face. Stephanie, you had such a brilliant season with p last year, but how difficult is it going to be to replicate that? Yeah, obviously, the team to be, aren't we? I think, um, <laughs> From the our illusions that the league is quite competitive, particularly with uh, Shells and, and Wexford, and um, they're getting a couple of decent players in as well. So this season, it's all about kind of maintaining our good form from last year, but also pushing on too. I think we're going to be pushed in every game we play. Uh, we played a pre-season friendly against DLR yesterday, and they really tested us, really pushed us. So every game, I think we're going to be the team to be, and you have to be able to handle that. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a big challenge for us, and, and hopefully we'll be able to win the league again. We were talking about how difficult it is to do back-to-back -back league wins, something that you have done, but back-to-back -back doubles? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, the, the, to finish off with the FUI Cup final last year was, was obviously very good as well. But look, as I said, the league is very competitive when you look around it. I think you've seen Cork City's run last year in the Cup as well. We probably just maybe pushed on ahead of them, obviously, in the final. I think uh, the quality within our squad kind of took over. But again, look, we want to win everything. I think every team in the league will say that to you. They're not going to come out and say they don't want to win games. So we want to win everything that's available. And, and hopefully we can do the double again. 
Gone in Cork City, we saw them after the, uh, the cup final and they were really hurting, you know, they, they really wanted it. But they'll have learned a hu huge amount from that experience last year. I think so, and they're going to have a, it's going to be tough for them this season though. They're, they've lost their star player, um, Saoirse Newland to Shelburne, and we all know how good she was, and she made them tick. She was the most, their creative asset. Um, and I think Ava O'Mahony now is going to have to start going into that role a little bit more. Um, there's some very, very good players in that Cork side. Like Christina Dring up front as well. She can give her a chance and she'll pull it away as well. So um, Cork, I don't know if they're going to be as competitive as they were last year because of the loss of Saoirse. Um, it's just, it's just, she's irreplaceable. Yeah. For, very, for very Cork young team. side as well, I think as well, aren't they? So it's mm. losing to Saoirse Noonan is one of their experienced players too. Could be, could be vital for them. But again, I think as you mentioned, Ava Manny, really good young player coming up, and um, they've got um, Sarah McEvitt as well, a girl who came from female, really, really good winger. So they've brought in a couple of players to try and to try and kind of Sophie replace. Liston's a good player yeah, Sophie too. Liston. They've got good players, yeah. they really do. So it's just about that little bit of experience, as we mentioned before, with. with with the team coming up this year or playing this year and they're well able to score goals which is important so Saoirse is going to be at Shelburne no kings in their recruitment drive Chloe Mustaki has gone in there as well they're going to be a, a difficult team to for Stephanie's P-Mount to stop as well yeah as you look at it there there, there were two points off P-Mount last year at the end of the season and P-Mount haven't made haven't made the signings that Shelburne have made um, so you might look at it as if Shelburne are really really push, going to push P-Mount this season like no king has brought, come in and as you said, brought in Chloe Mustaki, who's who's going to have who has a fire in her belly now because she was out injured. She was on on the verge of being called up to the international squad. Got injured training there, so she's going to want to prove prove her worth to Vera Pau as well in coming up for the for the women's national game international games. Um, bringing in players like Rebecca Craig back from Bohemians as well, and um, yeah, just some shrewd signings by Noel King, and uh, really looking forward to see how they get on. We know that they're a really good team, Steph. They were so close to you last year, but what do you think Noel is going to do to bring them on that little bit to, to close that gap? I think he'll probably bring in a little bit more togetherness with them. I think that's something that probably, when we're playing against them at times, I think sometimes they can get at each other a little bit too much, and I think Noel will stamp that out. I think he'll want them playing as a team unit. Um, we, we played a friendliest with the home-based Irish team against them recently, and really, really good. They, they are set up very well. Um, I was kind of interested to see how Noel would set up with them, because obviously playing with Noel on the international team, he probably played a more direct style of football, but he had them playing football. Um, they have really good talented players. You mentioned the likes of Saoirse Noonan, but the likes of Noel Murray, who's been there for a long time, very, very good technical player. And I think even the likes of Saoirse Noonan might learn from her in training, you know. So they've got good players all around the pitch, international type players. So I think they're, they're going to really push us this year. I think you mentioned ourselves, probably haven't made many, as, as many signings, but we're kind of more of a, a young team, with lots of young players coming through. But I think they're after getting the right players in into the positions that they need them. So it's, it's going to be a big push for them this year, I think. And Wexford as well. We saw Kylie Murphy in the news over the last week or so, and you can just tell by her that she really wants to to get out and win something this year. Absolutely, and there's some great young players. Obviously, Ellen Malloy winning the Young Player of the Year award, um, fully fully deserved as well. And she's got a bright future ahead of her. So Tom Elms, as we all know, he's he's, he's a winner in the dressing room. He's a, he, he wants his uh, his players to to perform on the pitch. Um, they've been successful over the last number of years in cup competitions, and they, he'll want to replicate that in the leagues for sure. For sure. And Steph, there's teams in the league, okay, they might not be anywhere near challenging for silverware at the moment, but there's a lot of improvement. Yeah, definitely. I mentioned ourselves playing against DLR yesterday. They obviously play Wexford. I think they're unbeaten in pre-season so far. I think they got a 2-2 draw against Wexford, which is a good result as well. I think Graham Kelly going in there has really improved them. Last season, they were a strong unit, defensively really hard to beat, but they've also brought in a couple of players this year who are experienced defenders want to get on the ball and play out from the back so like they're going to be i think the lr are going to really push a lot of the top uh, the bigger teams within the league as you mentioned but it's great to see i think the league has grown i think the likes of treaty uh mary curtain's obviously gone in there as a coach a very experienced player so she'll be able to kind of bring those players up a little bit as well and that loan it's going to be pushing it again it's just it's really good to see i think the league itself is improving every year every year i've been in it it's definitely improved and as i said i think it's great to see more competition coming into the league and, and it's going to be an exciting season and Conan, I think when you have like um, LOI TV showing all the games for free, you have SSE coming on as sponsor as well, and you know you just have a you see a pathway as well of of girls playing for their club and then getting a chance at the international level. All those things help and will drive it forward. Of course, of course, Maria. And I think the, the pathway you mentioned there is really really important because there's an under seventeen and then there was nothing then for for 
for the for the girls they have to go from under 17 to senior football and Steph will be able to tell you that's very very difficult so bringing an under 19 league as well is would be excellent but in throwing the, the sponsorship together and making it all one is, is really positive and um, making all the games free to air as well is, is is, is brilliant for, for everyone. Like I have daughters at home and that, that have been trying to get the games and they haven't been able to do that. So being able to show them and watch them at home will be invaluable. Yeah, and Steph, I'm sure you're probably sensing it as well already. You know, having those little extra things, it just makes everything almost easier. It makes it a little bit more worthwhile. Yeah, and I think as a player in the league, we appreciate it. I think it's it's nice to be appreciated. And as you mentioned, I think last season, there, there were issues with trying to find even just to result the games, you know, that kind of way, which is, in this day and age, obviously, women's football has pushed on a lot over the last number of years. So to have electricity on board and to have the, the live streaming is a huge step forward. I think for for a lot of people in Ireland, they probably haven't seen a lot of women's football. Obviously, the games being the international games being live on TV is it was a big step forward. And now to get the league here being uh, being shown live is, as I said, it's it's a good step in the right direction. And, and hopefully, it will continue over the next couple of years because. As I said before, there's a lot of talent within the league and there's a lot of players that need to be seen and hopefully they'll be seen this year. OK, well, I, I, I might as well ask you anyway, Steph, are we looking at a back-to-back -back double this year? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say anything different, can I, really? <laughs> Coden? Oh, I don't know, really. Um, She's I far enough away from I know, me. yeah, just a little, yeah, a little bit far. You can't... You can't look, you, P-Mount have been incredible over the last number of years, but I just think that with Shelburne's recruitment and bringing in... Uh, Sir Shanoon and um, I think that they'll be very I'm saying it was two points was close last year um, I think it'll be even closer this year if not Pip and P Mount. Well no matter what Sorry. happens it's <laughs> actually exciting <laughs> thanks so much. Right footed and she scored what a finish for Anya Gorman in the 73rd minute here at PRL Park Captain Fantastic has scored her 13th league goal of the season what a free kick right footed no chance for the goalkeeper. One of the most popular characters around the league is DLR Waves captain Catherine Cronin. We caught up with Catherine on how the Waves are shaping up this year and what it's been like playing in the Women's National League as well as being a nurse on the front line of a pandemic. I think we're definitely hoping to challenge a bit more um, both uh, in the Cup and in the league. Um, as you said, the, the league is getting that bit more competitive. The standards are being raised each year, so we definitely want to give everyone a really difficult game. We also have very, you know, we, we want to challenge, we want to go for, you know, potentially a top three spot and see what we can do. So we, we do have a lot of goals set for this year, but um, we're definitely looking to firstly improve on, on last year's finish. I think it was definitely difficult because there was a lot of uncertainty surrounding um, fixtures and whether we can train, whether we can travel. Um, but at the same time, we stayed together as a group. Um, we kept in contact regularly doing Zooms and things like that. So I think it was a good environment. It was great being part of a team, to be honest, uh, to check in with each other. Um, although obviously there was challenges, there was challenges for everyone and everyone was in the same boat. But um, hopefully now we're, we're hopefully coming out the other side of it. I really do think we're in a privileged position being able to come train and um, we're considered in that elite bracket that we're able to train and play matches so it's definitely provided a, a big relief for me and I can't wait to you know when I'm finished work just to come straight out training and uh, meet up with everyone. With Graham's job here in, in women's football you know it's it's getting easier for him year on year and um, you know he's getting to know the players the setup of the league and I think that's definitely what this team needs is consistency we need to know what the plan is and um, so I think it's been it's been really important and I think it's helped get new players on board as well because they can see what we're doing and, and what the plan is so it's been good. I think uh, the club, it's a very good atmosphere and, you know, there is a few senior players there and mixing well with, with the younger girls. So, yeah, I definitely um, feel I can provide, you know, from previous experiences um, and help the girls out. Good luck to Catherine and every other women's player ahead of the 2021 season. Now, as previously mentioned, SSE Ertricity has extended their sponsorship for the next two years. And now, for the first time, the Women's National League. We spoke to SSE Ertricity Marketing Director David Manning on the new sponsorship deal earlier this week. As SSE Ertricity, we're really excited to be here today um, for the launch of the Premier and first division of the leagues. It's a really exciting opportunity for us this time around as well. We're also going to be a sponsor of the Women's National League, which is going to be a huge opportunity. For SSE or Tristy, we've got 29 wind farms uh, around the country delivering sustainable energy. There's 29 teams in the league, and both of them are very much community-based 
type activities and community-based organisations. So the game of two halves is where we're effectively supporting both sides of the competition. So and effectively, if you think of it as a game of two halves, we're here to support the whole game. Another thing that we're doing this season is, is we're working with the soccer writers. Um, we've always had the Player of the Month award in the men's competition. And what we're looking forward to this year is also having a Player of the Month in the Women's National League also. But in the initial stage, we are an energy company. And one of the things that we're good at and that we can help with is to support clubs and how they can become more energy efficient, how they can reduce their energy consumption and become more cost effective and lower their carbon footprint as well. So that will be a major starting point for us over the next few months. So this is a very exciting time for us and uh, really all that's left for me to do is to wish the very best of luck to the clubs, to the managers, to the players and to the fans as well and I hope they've got a really enjoyable season ahead. A big thanks to David and his team at SSC Electricity for extending their magnificent support ahead of the 2021 season. There have been a number of big changes behind the scenes. The renewal of Watch LOI and the creation of LOI TV. We sat down with League Director Mark Scanlon to talk all things LOI ahead of the new campaign. Mark, uh, ahead of the 2021 season, great news announced the other week with the TV deal. Do you want to talk us through that? So it's, an, it's an amazing time for the league. Yeah, it's a very exciting time. Uh, Kieran, we're delighted to be able to have RTE Sport back on board again this year for live broadcast of games. Uh, very important to be able to bring that to the fans, particularly at this moment in time when they obviously can't attend stadiums uh, still. Uh, and extending that then into a full streaming service across the uh, Premier Division with Watch LOI and into the First Division and the Women's National League with LOI TV uh, means that for the first time we now have every National League game uh, live across either TV or live stream this year. Um, and that's very important, particularly now during the pandemic, to bring to fans, but uh, even more importantly after and when fans are safely back in stadiums, we hope that this will be part of a bigger, longer term project and, and not just uh, for this year. And as part of that LOI TV, of course, Women's National Games will be, will be free. How important do you think that is to bring the Na Women's National League to the people? Yeah, it's very important. The league now at this stage is uh, 10 years old. It's been growing in, in both popularity uh, and also in the quality that's been on the pitch as well. And it's important now to broadcast that to the fans. Uh, we've obviously seen uh, a massive rise in the media attention for women's sport in general uh, over the last number of years. And the 20 by 20 campaign uh, is obviously ongoing as well from that. And I think it's, it's important for us uh, to make sure that the young girls get the opportunity to see uh, the future and the National League pathways that are there uh, and bring it to a wider audience as well to, to promote the league and we were very impressed with uh, the, the amount of people who watched the games last year for example we done a live stream of P-Mount and Shelburne uh, which was it, essentially a title decider at the end of uh, last season's Women's National League uh, and as well as that obviously great coverage uh, on RTE Sport of uh, the Women's FAI Cup Final last year so to bring the whole league now um, to a wider audience is, is certainly something we're very excited about and something we're, we're hopeful will make uh, a big impression on the public this year. SSC Electricity renewed their sponsorship then extended it to the Women's National League as well. How important is that for the, the growth of the overall brand in your eyes? Yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, SSC Electricity have been a brilliant partner of uh, the league across men's football for the last 10 years, but some of the, the changes that uh, we've been making internally here uh, with our league department to ensure that, that the Women's National League is uh, brought in under the same banner and it was something that, that we were uh, really keen to do with our, our sponsorship arrangements for this year and SSE or Tristy were very excited about coming on board uh, to sponsor the Women's National League so I think it'll add uh, to the profile, it, it's, it's really important for uh, the leagues and for the consistency of, of the brand of the League of Ireland in general but uh, it's a really important and, and progressive sponsorship. There's been a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes in, in the league office, a uh, bit of restructuring as well. Can you talk us through some of the change you might have made uh, in the league office? Yeah, I think uh, one of the main things that we want to, to start doing with our league clubs is become much more of a, a service provider and help the clubs develop and grow in many different areas. So uh, we've uh, brought personnel in to be able to help the clubs in areas of club development, academy, uh, community development and links to education as well. So uh, we're very excited to be able to have that level of support now for the clubs that maybe uh, wasn't there previously in the past and the fact that uh, we now have an opportunity to help them uh, both on and off the pitch as, as we continue to grow and uh, it's been really good consultation over the last year with the clubs in terms of, of their own development, uh, what their own goals and aspirations are 
uh, and a lot of the clubs have, have done amazing work in these areas so now it's just uh, a matter of trying to solidify a lot of that, bring it together and, and formalise that into a strategy for the future of the league. And as part of that restructuring in the league office of course you've been able to bring in associate sponsors and broaden the horizons of the, the work you do in the league. Yeah, I think something we've we've always had before was a title sponsor of the league, and, and this year we uh, wanted that to remain, um, which obviously SSE or Tristy are in place for. But associate sponsors is important to us that we can start to develop them other areas uh, in conjunction with the new staff. So uh, the first part of that has been Bank of Ireland coming on board as our community uh, development sponsor and as part of the the more than a club uh, project that we hope to roll out. We've seen some successful pilot pilot programs run over the last couple of years and it's an area clubs are getting more and more involved and we're very excited of, of having uh, a big brand like the Bank of Ireland on board to help us uh, to be able to roll that out further. And finally, speaking of the clubs, of course a lot of hard work has gone on behind the scenes at every club up and down the country to make sure football continues during the pandemic. How proud have you been to see the preparations for the 21-21 season, but also completing the season last year? Yeah, last year, look, every, everybody was uh, in the unknown last year when the pandemic hit and I think the main goal last year was to, to, to finish the season, get the games completed and the club's done an incredible job uh, in terms of making sure that the environment was safe for the players, the coaches, the supporters. Uh, when, when a few limited number of fans were in stadiums at, at some points from last year. Uh, and we've worked really hard in conjunction with the clubs over the off-season to make sure that we've uh, updated our COVID-19 protocols. Uh, the clubs have engaged in, in, in workshops with their medical staff, first team coaches, uh, event controllers, COVID compliance officers, media officers. Uh, and there's been a lot of work and consultation going on and um, that, that work has borne fruit now. At the minute we've seen really successful pre-season games taking place. Uh, and the clubs are in a, in a really good situation, ready to go ahead of the, the start of the league season. So uh, hopefully we can continue to uh, keep a safe environment there and importantly bring the game back to the fans who've obviously missed out on so much over the last year. Okay guys, we are coming to the end of the show. I know that you have called your predictions a little bit earlier, but you've had some time to think about it now. So if you do want to change your main mind, now is the time. So just in a word, Conan, Premier Division champions. Shamrock Rovers. Steph. Shamrock Rovers. First division? Shelburne. <laughs> Shelburne. <laughs> okay, and for the most interesting one, the Women's National League? Shelburne. Peanuts. Okay, guys, well, I have to say it is uh, brilliant to have you here today, and um, everybody can watch the games on LOI TV and watch LOI. Thanks a million. And Steph, best of luck. Thank you, Mary. Whoever you support. Whatever colours you wear. Get them ready. It's all about to kick off. Get ready to hold your breath. Get ready to have your nerves shredded. Get ready to roar for your team. Because we're capable of anything. This is our league. And again. Oh, what a goal! What a goal that is! Let's make it our season. It's a game of two halves. We support both. SSE Airtricity, official sponsor of the men's and women's leagues.